Coach, what's, how we doing? Coach what's O'Brien. What's up, baby? Oh, boy. Okay, enough of that. We're good, we're good to go? Yeah, we're ready to fucking roll. I'm just going to run down that list that I threw into the grooming before, and we can kind of go off those basic topics. And then at the end, if you guys have proposals to throw in, we right. shall cover them. You guys ready? Yeah. Sure. For the COVID IR spots, we know like 60% of our rosters are just going to be infested throughout the majority of the year. So yeah. we'll have one as we normally do for regular players, like your fucking guy breaks his foot in the first week and he might come back week eight. We'll have that still open. I'm going to open up as many <laughs> uh, <laughs> as many COVID spots, IR spots as Yahoo allows. So if they let us do like eight IR spots, I was thinking we could just have the maximum allowed for that. Um, is everybody cool with that? Yes. Yeah, that you have to. I like, a special... the, I like the thumbs up if we're just like a yes rather than fucking yelling about it. That's beautiful. They uh, make John. a designation for if it has COVID or not, I guess. So the, the other platforms like uh, Sleeper and some of the other ones we use for like Dynasty have, have made the change where they have an actual IR COVID spot for it. Sure. Um, so I'm assuming like Yahoo's going to follow suit with that stuff and we won't really have to worry about it. But otherwise, we'll keep one IR spot open for like normal shit like that since the rosters are probably going to be bigger because of that do you guys want to have a draft that's a little bit extended like do you want to make the bench spots bigger and have the draft like an extra three to four rounds i like that just because it's going to avoid the problem of having to pick up those extra players if you lose someone to covid like unexpectedly like yeah the waiver wire situation we were talking hey, about Adam, before gain sir gain gain mike is this is this better yeah, closer to your mouth, usually louder, sir. Welcome to podcast. Talk, Talk into the top. Are you going to podcast every week? It's a new setup here. I'm trying to get the, the hang of it. Still. That like, setup is bullshit. That looks like shit. It looks like blues glue you. behind you. What is happening? That's yeah, like they, a they got your notebook. project. He's just he's in a classroom. You can what is that it. microphone? That cord too. It's, it's awesome. It's yellow. I'm gonna propose twenty. I yeah. So a is thumbs up or thumbs down on twenty. What the fuck would there be 20, 20, wait, 20 bench spots? No, no, no. no. 20, no. 20 rounds altogether in the draft. You cut. Right. Right. So we're, we're drafting for an hour and a half. An Where hour. do you have to be? Where do you have so to be? The you draft is the best part. part. So yeah. Everybody's fired. Everybody's fine. got nothing to do. So here's, here's one oh, thing that we're going to have to figure out. I don't know how NFL is logistically Wait, going what? to announce the players that are on COVID IR on a daily basis. When it comes to Sundays, it could be a shit show and it probably won't be your fault. So I was thinking like each Sunday we can open up the waiver wire. Like I can manually open it up. I'll let you guys know like 11 a.m. every Sunday. I'll post in the group me or something like opening up the waiver wire 11 o'clock. You know, it's free roam until game time kicks off. But if on Sunday mornings, that's the only time that we hear about like the COVID IR slots or some shit like that, it'll put everybody... What do you? What the fuck you got to say down there, Steve? I know. I mean, I just <laughs> imagine someone brought that up three years ago, and they bring it up every single year. The Sunday morning waiver pickup. Yeah. That's all thumbs up, though, right? No, denied. Now it's denied because <laughs> you just fucking spoke up. It's denied. <laughs> the <laughs> Sunday morning pickup. Every single other league in the country does it. No, don't know about that. It's really not true. Uh, as for now, we're gonna put the manual 11 a.m. Sunday morning waiver opening. Uh, into effect. Okay, and now the big one. Like, if we have a shortened season, here is my upfront proposal. And, and maybe maybe we want to work with the money situation first. Do you guys want to lower the buy-in this year? Was it four or four fifty? Four fifty, right? So what I was thinking is this: like, I don't know what you guys think, but if there's a shortened season, I don't think anybody should be winning anything. Like, I would be down to throw the normal buy-in this year. If there's a shortened season, then that buy-in just pays your next year's buy-in what if you're like nine and oh and they cancel the season shit out of luck you should be handsomely rewarded maybe not i don't know i don't have another so, idea i'm just straight up like i don't want anyone being crowned or given some shit if we didn't play a full season you get an asterisk i agree with that you could even do it like if it gets canceled between like week eight and the playoffs it could be like you win half. Like I don't want to be living week, in a world where they cancel this season halfway through. If you get through. to week 13 and they cancel the season and you're like 12-1 and one or whatever, like you should get some for that. Like How do you the guys further think? you make it into the season, the bigger percent of the pot you would win. Yeah, I get it. Like we tier. What regular, like, what's the regular season payout normally? I forget. Uh, best points, uh, most points, best record. Wasn't 150 last yeah. year, Joe? Yeah, so, like whatever that is, if we get to like week 10, that should stay the same. And who keeps the belt? The person who won the last year? 
I mean, yeah, you're still defending champ. <laughs> right, I'll, 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 I'll vote for that. Why not? Basically, what I'm saying is like NFL cancels week 13. Someone's yeah. sitting there at like 12 and one or some shit or 11 and one. They don't win anything. That okay. would suck so hard. That would be it, like, it I would. It would. Give them something. Yeah. I got a. Yeah, I got a. For a tiered approach. I'm, I'm, I'm on my ears right now. I'm listening. I got a proposal. Week eight, everyone gets. Before week eight, everyone gets their money back. Roll it over. If it's between week eight and the end of our regular season, week 14, tear it out somehow. And then if we get to the playoffs, uh, divide it up evenly between the four teams left in the playoffs. And then if we play the playoffs, great. Everything's normal. Why don't we just do the regular season prize? Like from week eight to the playoffs, we, if the most points usually gets 150 bucks, then like that's the prize for the year. I'm, I'm down. I would rather, ha I'd rather keep it simplistic and be like, if it's canceled week 11, 150 to first place, 150 yeah. to most points. And that's, that's it. Really straightforward. Yeah, yeah. I like that too. Uh, how would, and how would that work with next year? Does everybody revamp up another 400 something bucks or? Yeah, whatever's left in the pot will be transferred equally amongst all the league members. The difference right. is next year's buy-in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So if it gets canceled before the completion of week eight games, so weeks one through eight, if it gets canceled at any point, roll it back. It's all getting rolled over to next year. Yeah. Anything from week nine through week 14, first place, most points. I think those are the two places that should get money. Yeah. Sure. 200? 200 a piece. Yeah. 200 a piece. All right. So if something happens in the playoffs, split the entire pot. Split it four ways. I'm yeah. cool. Split it four ways if it's during the playoffs. Or I'm split it four ways if it's week, you know, when yeah, there's obviously, teams left. Then two, two ways, ways the if other there's way. two teams. Okay. All, right. Like Simple. All right, yeah, so chop the whole pot in the playoffs. <laughs> I mean, imagine that. You no, know. it's not happening. Like, it's not I hope happening. It doesn't. They're I not hope canceling it doesn't. week 17. Roger Goodell would need to die, and they'll cancel. I hope, I hope it doesn't. I hope you're right, Steve. Okay. Um, next thing up on the list. Tight ends. Me and Snacks want to up the value of tight ends. Now, we've been playing in a few leagues where we make it a tight end premium league. So whatever we do for PPR, like regular players get half PPR, tight ends will get an extra half point on that. So tight ends will actually get a full PPR for their scoring formats. So I will propose having, keeping the normal half PPR, but tight ends score a full PPR point when they catch the ball. All right, uh, so I'm going to go tight end premium. That's my proposal. Dude, I couldn't even name 20 tight ends. There we go. Majority rules, baby. Tight end That's a cool rule. That's a cool rule. Let's talk about the buy-in price, actually, before we get off money. So last year, does anyone actually remember for a fact what it was? I'm almost positive. I think it was 400. It was 450. I want to say 450. 450. Okay, 450. so literally no one knows. We're just naming <laughs> random fucking numbers. It was 450. It was 450 last year. So I think we're, we're probably all in agreement that, like, there's going to be a cutoff here eventually. Yeah. So we could raise it to 500 this year if everyone's cool with that, which is what we've been doing pretty much year over year, and then, you know, figure it out from there. Um, so 500, is everyone? I think 500 is a good spot, and then you could stay there for a little while if need be. Yeah, for yeah. Like, like a year, and then we'll yeah, <laughs> like evaluate maybe. Then we'll go, then we'll go up to, to two and a half K. So Love that. We got exponential. Well, I mean, hold on. It. Ask the shitty players in the league. <laughs> ask Joe, ask George, ask that kid in the white shirt who hasn't said anything. Don't you have a last place um, finish under your belt? Yeah, because you guys gave me a shitty team. We won't talk about that, though. We gave you a shitty team. Uh, honestly, though, I I'm won't touch on that. I'm muting but, you. But, yeah, five. <laughs> <laughs> that was sick. So, <laughs> yeah, 500 pays, is good. Pays to be the good. boss, motherfucker. All right, so 500 is the buy-in this year. Next thing up was new league member. So we do have one candidate that we think would fit the league perfectly. He has already said he's in for it and he will accept the position if offered, but I wanted to run it by you guys to make sure you're cool with it. Uh, it's Larry, Mr. Loud Styler. Yeah. Yeah. Put that cool. I don't think we could have had like a more perfect person to come into the league. Are there any oppositions to Larry entering the league? No, um, no, not at all. Steve. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Larry Talking will now. be good. Larry will be good. Yeah, Larry's good for content. He's good for business. All right, so Mr. Larry Styler is the newest league member of the E-Town Get Down. Punishment. I want to talk Punishment. to Larry Sr. Punishment. Punishment. What a board. George will be doing his punishment this weekend. Midnight, we kick off. Midnight, we kick off. I don't know if you want to come here for the morning session. Or I'll let you know. Punishment for this year. Here's how we'll do the punishments this year. We'll do like a normal conversation as we typically would. I'll write down like the top seven or eight, and then I'll text all you guys individually if you want to add anything else to the list at some point, either tonight or tomorrow morning. 
And then once I finalize the list, I'll send it back out to you guys and you'll be able to give me your one, two, three, and then we'll rally up the points like we usually do from that. All right. Yeah. It's a cool system. Okay. So punishments. Who's got ideas? War boy. Yeah. Water boy. <laughs> I was obviously. waiting for that. I was Who waiting for that. I love it. Um, I, me and Jason are really going to push for this one this year, guys. Uh, mm-hmm. threat. <laughs> love yes. Love I'm liking yeah. it. Do we have any other ones? We have waterboarding and <laughs> threat. I mean, lemonade, lemonade stand. No. Yeah. I like something with like uh something with like Instagram. You know, you have to do like a weekly. The yoga thing was always a. I, I, whoever brought that up a few years ago. Thirty days of yoga. Yeah, yeah. I like that. You have Got to live with Max for a week. Ah. I like the frosted tips. I think that's funny. Yeah, frosted yeah. Right. I like that too. I think we should. What about something where like you go like, pegging with balls, like tennis balls and tennis rackets and shit? No, like paintball would be better. It's like the dumbest ball. shit I've ever heard. Animal. Max, why don't we just put a, a leather mask on you, put a gag ball in your mouth, and you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that what is that what you just want, animal? Because we can just do that. For I, just, you. There, there's I want like, someone it, to get hurt. Like, what about a little butt tattoo? Just a little one. I'm down for the tattoo. Good for a butt tattoo. Go, let's do a butt tattoo this year. Come on. Uh, no. Like, no, no shot. I'm, put, I'm putting tattoo I'm on good. the list. Shot. All right, we've got waterboarding, threat, lemonade stand, um, 30 days of Instagram, frosted tips, butt tattoo. WNBA game? Like a, I, I always, I, yeah, I the WNBA, WNBA games, that's a great idea because we all can actually kind of go and get involved. Yeah, I always like that one. Like that I, just, I, like I did that for another league. It was actually one. kind of a nice day. I got like courtside <laughs> seats for like sixty dollars, <laughs> but I, the thing I couldn't drink or smoke or do anything. So that's yeah, like no yeah. phone, no drinking, nothing. It's, uh, I, I seen one where they made uh, this guy sleep in his backyard outside with no tent or anything. He had to make his own shelter out of whatever he found. <laughs> what? I that would be cool. Woods for a weekend with just like well, a if night. you live in yeah. relax with a whole weekend, I'm not opposed yeah. to that. I'm gonna, I'll throw that on the list. Survivor <laughs> man, kind of a good night in the woods. Yeah, I like that. Survivor <laughs> man. Oh, uh, dude, I want to lose now. We have eight right now. I will, I will send the eight that we have to each of you guys individually. And I guess if you have any other ones that pop up in your head, what if, uh, <laughs> what if the loser has to like engrave their toilet with their name? What? Animal. I told you it's not to get high you. before this yeah. video. I was just going to say, you were not supposed to smoke dope before this, Max. Can he, can he elaborate on that? Yeah, I don't really get where I was going with it. It just kind of popped in my head. I thought I'd say it. Something that was like, so got, stupid. Like, what was he even talking about? Idea. Engrave your toilet? That's the dumbest thing. I don't even understand it still. Loser has to get the winner's name engraved on their toilet. Okay, wow. we're going to end the meeting there. Thank you guys for joining. I'll send you over <laughs> the list of punishments and get you back to me. It? With any of your punishments, you guys want? Oh, wait, is there any? Hold on, on pick, right? We're gonna vote before, top three. Before we actually go, does anyone have any more like proposals that they want to implement to the actual league, not punishment wise? We're still doing the draft live, or we're planning to do the draft live, or no? We are. I mean, yeah, we're we're planning to do it live. Yeah. Uh, drafting from a computer. Okay. Does anyone have anything to add? <laughs> what's the date of the draft he's gonna bring this up every year but like let's just what do you mean george what's the date of the draft it's the same day every, for 10 years it's labor day monday every time does anyone have any actual like uh league settings that they want to talk about or bring up no we good otherwise oh sorry steve i, f- I forgot you were i can't unmute you been muted this whole go. fucking time i had great points I'm yeah we no great. we heard them we heard I was them. saying great stuff <laughs> well i heard it larry styler's coming in oh <laughs> Oh! Yeah. <laughs> yes, from Lunch. outer fucking space. Lunch. Hey. Huge. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the fucking E-Town Get Down Fantasy Football League, sir. Yeah, man, this is out of this world, dude. Out of the world. <laughs> out of the world. <laughs> You're in. You missed the entire meeting, so you don't really get to say on anything. Out of this world. Do you, do you, have, any, do you have any punishment uh, ideas you oh, want to throw yeah. on the table? Uh, no, no. That was <laughs> wrong. Way too what, an ad- what an addition this kid is. Okay, this Bye. is going to conclude this fucking meeting. Good job, guys. Thank Wait, you for, a, thank you for really coming. All right, so Snacks doesn't want to clue us in on his big date tonight. So everybody in the comment section, go boo this man. <laughs> boo. We're supposed to be a brotherhood here. We're supposed to be a family. We're all supposed to help each other out. We're supposed to know about what's going on in each other's lives. Serious uh, question this is ridiculous. here. Serious question. So you're going to dinner, right? Now this is dinner is something that I consider to be like an intimate type of scenario where like you're going somewhere, you gotta like make a lot of eye contact, you gotta think of conversations. Do you think that sex is less intimate than dinner? 
less intimate. Like in today's world? No. <laughs> no. For, I think for me, so I feel you, like it's you, you easier to have people, sex with someone people struggle, than to go people to a struggle, dinner. People struggle to make eye contact with, with one another. You just think it's easier? Like, so for me, I think if, if a girl just wanted to have sex, I could do that. But if she wants to like go to dinner... I feel like we'd have a better time having sex just because, like, <laughs> I'm going to be more into that. You're going to have a better time having sex. No, no, I, She's not. Well, girls, she might. That's up to her. Well, girls, that's up to me. the way we look at sex is very different. Oh, I know. It's a really emotional yes. experience so for then, them. Let me rephrase that. For men, do you think that it is less intimate than dinner? So I feel like for me to go to dinner with a girl, that's more nerve-wracking than to just pound her out. Um, phrasing? That, Excuse my, my, but that's, my that's French. why when you look at sex that way, just pound her out. <laughs> like, there's, there's a difference between fucking and making love. Yeah, but you don't make love on the first date. Like, you're not making love. Some do. If you do, if you do dinner this well. This isn't the notebook, my Di guy. I want all of you forever, you and me, every day. <laughs> Listen, right. I've had very good. It's a good, it's a good movie. I've Great. had very good one night things like that where I felt like a more And then what? You never talk to them again? So it was just pounding them out. Phrase it. No, it just but felt better in the time. moment it wasn't like that. Okay, listen. Here's a, here's a problem. I think there's an argument to Here's a had. problem. You're nervous about going on dates. Most people are. Most yeah. people, especially in today's world, a lot of people don't go on dates. People are like, what are you going to talk it's about? A lost what, art. what are you going to do? The way I think about it, I'm like, dude, like you're about to go out with a girl who you have not seen for 20 she has 25 years of life that she could talk about like there's there should be no pause if you're actually interested in what they're saying and you're able to just ask them questions about what they're saying there's also nothing off limits on first dates true but i see, hate that my problem is like me being a big sports guy like that is my life like sports and gambling are like the two things in my life so like to go on a date and just talk about sports like i need to my problem is i'm trying to think like what can i talk about not sports wise Probably too much sports. but you're not but that's also not all you are though too like we have conversations outside of that you i know just, yeah, you you're just, relatively a normal guy you Rel put yourself in a box agree. and then you're like i don't want to talk about that because i'm not like an expert in the field but that's like what being a fucking human is like you talk about shit that you're passionate about that might be weird to other people but that's how you get to know somebody yeah for sure but then yeah i uh, listen my my point is i think just maybe for some people it's for me it's easier to just have sex Pound them out. go on a date Pound them out I th I'm telling you I think there's less intimacy involved for me and it depends on how you define the word intimate you know there's but, situations yeah where sex can be less intimate than than going on a dinner but like I think at our age like sex is is not something that listen we've had our fair share of like one night stands like 21 22 23 years old and those are definitely not intimate right no but now it's like girls that are our age don't want to they don't, they're not really just looking to get railed. Phrasing. Right? When you're like, yeah, it we, when you're 27, 29 ish. Most. Most. When you most, get to like most, 35, they get back to that. No, they all want kids. <laughs> no, they realize no. they have no more time left. No, they don't. They, it's too late. They, so they, they, they get married, start hating their lives. Just, just going to bang this dude because I need something to bang me. I don't think that's the case. I'm telling you. I'm not. Well, he's, he's pushing 35, so yeah. I guess he can tell <laughs> I us. I just turned 30 like a month ago. So you're pushing 35. Yeah. You're closer to 35 30, than 30 you are going 25. on 40. Ooh, oh, I would shit. say you're. I would say you're right there. Yeah, I mean, I can't physically be. It's wrong. only mathematically correct. Yeah, not a strong suit of mine. It's so about, about a month closer, but you're closer. So are we just a dating and lifestyle podcast? Now? All right. Hi, daddy. Anyways, yeah, I, guess, I guess no, so. we're not because snacks won't talk about his actual fucking date, loser. <laughs> Anyways. This is the Fade the Public podcast. If you haven't already turned us off, welcome. Uh, my name is Nicholas. Actually, I think that might be the only part they listen to. That is Animal. That is Snacks. Go follow them on Twitter. If you do so, you'll be entered into a draft guide giveaway. We got the big dogs. Got to eat draft guide. The Bible just went live yesterday. So you will get that beautiful Mona Lisa from these fingertips if you follow them too on Twitter. Animal, what's on the agenda? What's the As guts? a devout Catholic, I think you should change the name. As a devouted non-Catholic, I don't give a f <laughs> Scott, beep that fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, on the schedule today, we're going to be talking. Uh, we had our league meeting for the E-Town Get Down, so we're going to discuss you know, some of the new rules and you know, uh, anything that we decided during that meeting. We're going to announce our punishment, mm. which is uh, it's a big thing for us. It's something that it's we a, take. It's a different one. We take that yeah. pretty seriously. This is a good uh, one. Hard Knocks is premiering. We're going to do a quick little fantasy lightning round for these two guys. And then we're going to have a nice little social ending where we're going to do some uh, snacks pantry. Mm. So uh, we're gonna, mm. snacks doesn't actually know, but we're setting up a fake date so he could practice <laughs> for tonight. <laughs> Animal's going to be the server, the waiter, and I'm going to be his date. 
and we're gonna practice. That would actually be good. A I little mock like date. That. Yeah, it's pretty fucking good. Mock date. We oh, might wow. switch up the end of the mock episode. date Monday. We should start that. Yo, Yo, mock date Monday. That'd be incredible. Yeah. We wanted to put to pull up a van outside of the restaurant Snacks was in and put an earpiece in, <laughs> and yeah, like uh, the tell them what to do. Scenes. Harriet's method of solving cubics. The answer is A. Harriet's method of solving cubics. Yeah. I, th- I still think it's maybe the second date. Yeah, See how the first date goes. Second date, we'll get a van. Love that. Love that. All right. You're still denying? You're still denying it, Snacks? <laughs> Scott, hit the intro. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking idiots. <laughs> idiots. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Run it. All right, so... Most of you just saw that vlog. For those of you that are listening, we're going to tell you what happened to our league meeting and some of the new rules and uh, some of the things that we changed for this upcoming season. Couple Nick, All right, just to you... give you context, if you haven't been following us for a couple of years now, th- that was for the E-Town Get Down League. This is for the, I believe this is the 12th year in the league now, maybe 11th. I don't remember. I think, no, I think it's 12th. Yeah, it's 11 or 12th. 11 or 12th year in the league that we've been in for the most part since the beginning. It's all people from like our high school also for the most part. So we've been in it for a while. We've been doing the same league and we've been, you know, changing rules. We have our league meeting every summer, which is what you just watched. And it's probably our, our most competitive, our most prized league. The one that we, you know, if we could choose one league that's out of all, we wanna, that's, yeah. that's the one we want to bring home the fucking hardware in. So we basically come to each meeting with a set of proposals or a set of rules that we may want to change and we do a vote on anything that we put to uh to change and majority vote i saw that majority vote would change the rule six out of ten gets the rule change so biggest changes for this year that we did i think we started off basically talking about what we're going to do with like the whole covid shit expanding rosters the ir etc cetera, etc cetera. so what we did was extend the draft we normally do 16 rounds we're going to make it 20 rounds and extend our rosters our roster spots to 20 okay so we don't have to be going nuts on the waiver wire every time someone goes to the covid and you know becomes a fucking this was a good solution to pretty much two problems because there's the worry of the whole covid thing and the ir spots where you can do those guys so we solved that and now we had the issue of you know the waiver wires you just whistled yeah Yeah, that was crazy the only time i've ever whistled in my life too (laughs) i can't whistle on purpose (laughs) we have that issue solved where oh i think pretty much solved where now we don't have to worry about guys you know scrambling to try and pick up extra people because they already have them on their roster and their bench so yeah so we extended it to help that problem we also once we we do our league on yahoo so once yahoo opens up the feature for putting players on the COVID ir we will make that part of the roster uh we're going to put as many ir spots as they let us probably somewhere from like eight to ten if possible i just figure you know it's not your fucking fault if someone gets COVID ir it's going to fuck up the season if you have to drop them every time someone lands on the list and they take up roster spots so we're going to put as many as possible so those are our changes is also a 10-man league, so that yeah. I think will work to our advantage yeah. in somewhat, some capacity. What do you mean? Uh, you know, just the fact that there'll be more guys available to us. Okay, There's true. There's two yeah. extra teams, you know, taking up guys, you know. It'll, it'll be interesting to it's see how point. those... Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how those four, uh, those four extra bench spots end up affecting the league because the waiver wire is going to be a lot more... Ba- like in a 10-team league, you're usually, you usually have a lot of good options on the yeah, waiver exactly. wire. Now there are almost going to be no handcuffs. Mm-hmm. Uh, most oh, every quarterback is going to be owned. So typically, yeah. like in our super flex league, it is super flex league. But since it's ten teams, there's usually like those bottom five ranked quarterbacks who are they're all going like, to be owned. Like the Nick Foles will yeah, like will Mario be on is the probably going to be owned this year. Yeah, all those guys are going to be owned. So it's going to get interesting to see what the strategy is when we get to drafting. The big change for us was the tight end position. Now all the tight ends are going to be owned because Finally. we've moved to tight end premium. So we play a regular half PPR league, and we wanted to make tight ends a little bit more valuable. So we moved them from half PPR to full. Everyone else is still half, but tight ends, no matter if they're in the tight end slot or the flex spot, are full PPR. So that's exciting because in the same way that when you make the move from standard league to half PPR, you open up the options to a lot more pass-catching running backs, right? The pool of players in which you would start or keep on your bench or whatever gets extended. We want to make, basically, we've been moving towards this, like, universal roster where all the positions are, are, are valued, right? Now, Superflex makes quarterbacks valuable. Running backs are obviously always valuable. Now, this makes tight ends valuable outside of just, like, the top three guys. So, you could start, you know, you could grab two or three of the mid-tier tight ends, and those could be your flex plays, right? Rather than starting, like, a Christian Kirk who might put up, like, 
four for 60, which is okay. You know, a tight end could easily overtake that in the flex zone. So uh, thoughts on moving to tight end premium. I'm excited. I'm I've excited been, too. I, I voted for this last year. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I mean, I only I voted wanted, against I wanted it to do because two I, tight ends starting. Last I believe year. out of the like six or seven leagues I'm in, four or five of them are already tight end premium. So I just wanted a little, little diversity. Well, but you, I don't think you've physically played in a tight end premium. Yeah, no, yet, I have. Right? I took Zach Ertz in the first round and took like 11th place. So yeah, I know I know what it's like that's, to play in tight end. We also did the that's, the big dogs. Yeah, that's the, the one. big dogs team league. I took last Zach Ertz year. in the first round. Uh, yeah, oh, I remember I took right. Evan Ingram tight, in like the third or fourth round. Yeah, yeah, so like, correct. it's not that I'm against tight end premium. I just want a little diversity in my leagues. But so I'm not I'm not upset. Well, about I mean, it. this league has not been tight end premium once. So I guess this just got it's diversified. Not my, my point. I'm talking about my other leagues. You know, I'm in like six, seven leagues, and five of them are tight end premium. I would have liked to keep one not. That's all. So, but I'm I'm not upset about it. So, okay. That's it. That's fine with me. Um, what else? What do we do? So we have a new league member. Oh, we do. News. I don't believe he's ever appeared on the channel before, but you guys are going to like him. Um, Actually, he Andy was, Reed. Andy, he was Reed. Andy Reed. He was Andy Reed in the NFL draft Scott, promo please, video. Scott, uh, please play that, that Andy Reed clip. Just the Andy Reed clip. Hey, Andy, we're on the clock. I don't worry about it. We got Patrick anyway. I'm busy grilling. Yeah, so we had Mr. Chris Radici drop from the league because which I am heartbroken about. Unfortunately, a heartbroken. champion. I love him. Never like to see a former champ former go. Former champ's gone. He just lost the passion for football, which is ironic because, like, he's a Chiefs fan. He's, or he grew up a Chiefs fan, and he loses the passion of football before Pat Mahomes wins the Super Bowl and probably the next 10. See, that makes me question if he ever had it. Because how can you fucking give up on your team now? No, no. I could, I could, because I, I could relate to that in multiple sports. I stopped caring about the N NBA, the MLB, like that. Because That's when Kevin Durant left, though. It wasn't because that. I just, like, had more focus in my life that I need to, like, I, I can't put had, my energy on these other sports. You don't think it had anything to do with it? So when he lost his passion about the Red Sox, who left to make him lose his passion? Yeah, it was just like. I mean, they just won a World Series, and then they lost everyone, didn't they? No. I, that wasn't what made me not be a fan anymore. A long time I, the only thing I focus on is the NFL now. I could understand. He said, like, his life just started going in other fucking yeah. directions, and he couldn't focus on it. Terrible time to pick it, but luckily we do have a Chiefs fan in the league still, and that is, may have been a, <laughs> a lifelong Chiefs fan since last December. Animal was nice enough to go out and get us all uh, wires that matched our team colors. So I got Chiefs, Broncos, and the Giants. Good stuff, boys. Thanks, Animal. <laughs> really nice of you, buddy. Such a fraud. Definitely not paying you back for all right, that. All right, so, so Larry Lunch is in the league. Larry good guy. Excited about guy. that. It's going to be a good like addition. Him. I think you're gonna, he's going to be in some content, I think, eventually. We'll get him involved. For sure, yeah. He's a very funny guy, so glad to have him in the league. Was glad to have him in the league. In the league. Glad, 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 glad. What, um... Punishment? No, punishment will do last. Okay. What else? Is there anything else? Not that rules it? wise. No, yeah. uh, no. Oh, one one thing we will be doing, and I think actually some of you guys should implement this. If you play in a fab league, right? Your waiver wire is not like a number order thing. Play in a fab where everyone gets a hundred or thousand dollars at the beginning of the year, and you do the blind bid system. The way we have it set up is it runs when Wednesday through Sunday every single morning, and that's it. There's no free for all pickup for free agents at any point during the week. It's only blind bids. But what we're going to do, as what I'm going to do as commissioner, is every Sunday at 11 a.m., I'm going to announce it in the group chat. I'm going to say waiver wire is opening at 11 a.m., and I'll open it free-for-all because we don't know the logistics behind how the NFL is going to announce who is on the COVID IR list, like daily, or if they're going to do it on – like, we don't know what's going on. So I don't want people put in a spot where, like, four of their players randomly pop up on the COVID IR slot. And they, like, physically can't Sunday morning, right. And – this has been a problem in our league before, but only because people are stupid and they don't pick up backups when we know like a tight end is on the injury list or whatever. But at this point, since we don't know how the NFL is going to announce these things, we want to make sure that we put a precaution in place. So we will have blind bids Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then also open them up on Sunday at 11 a.m. So if you play in fabs, fab league, I would suggest thinking about doing something similar to that. All right. So then the last thing outside of the punishment is the, uh, the stipulations for if we have a season ending early. So oh, we have, right. if the season cool. is canceled prior to the completion of week eight games, all buy-in money is rolled over to the 2021 fantasy season buy-in. So basically just paying for next year's buy-ins. And, and having a few over. fun weeks. If the season is canceled after week eight, but before the playoffs, first place in the standings will win $200. Most points will win $200. And the rest of the money will be rolled over to the buy-in for next year. The four hundred dollars lost from the pot for those two people will be split amongst everybody for next year's buy and sell. It'll be like thirty bucks a person instead of our normal four hundred and fifty or whatever. 
And then if the season is canceled during the playoffs, the entire pot will be split amongst the remaining teams. So it'll be four teams or two teams, depending on actually what? the entire spot. If it's, if it's in week 15, then it's split amongst the four. If it's in week 16, once we split have the two, two, uh, amongst the two. Yeah. all right, cool. Yeah. So that's, I our, feel like that's, that's like the fairest way to do it. I think I like we that. came to a good agreement on the situation. It would be fucked up. It, it would be fucked up if it was week 14 and then like, as soon as week 15 started, then they canceled the season, yeah. you know? And like but the, I don't think we're going to have to worry about like, that. It's, yeah. that. it's that week eight threshold that's yeah, exactly. really going to I feel like, that's if, like November. if we make it past the week eight, they're not going to be like, week 15, cancel, lock it I down. I almost feel like it's right. either going to be shut down immediately or yeah. it's not or at it's all. Not. It's going to be yeah. like week two or week that's going to be like But if we don't have those contingency and half plans the NFL, in. Yeah, and half the yeah. NFL is in COVID. Yeah, so what, I, what we suggest doing is is really just having something in place yeah. so that if something does happen, you know, you could look at the rules and be like, this is how we're going to do it. Everybody agree to it up front, and we roll with that. To sum up the meeting, we had our list of punishments that were possibilities for the end of the season, and we... Last place loser punishment. Yes, the last place loser punishment, and we came to a... I don't want to say an agreement, but everyone votes... And we voted on... Here's, what, here, here's the process, basically. During the discussion, everyone throws out ideas for what the last place punishment loser should do. Hey, Scott, pop up that list. Yeah, so we'll have like oh, 10 no, or so no. ideas. And once we get it finalized, I text everybody individually the list. And they text me back their top three choices in order. What they want the most, what they want the second most, and third most. So if you text me back you know, X choice as the number one, it gets three points. Waterboarding is number one. That gets three points. Second place, two. Third place, one point. After I tally up all 10 members' votes, whatever has the most points obviously wins the loser punishment. And by a pretty wide margin, we introduced a new option this year, and it was surviving a night in the woods. <laughs> I love it. I love it, this too. This one. was the one I voted I'm, for. First I was a little place. surprised that it won because normally, like, the new one, it, like, sits in there for, like, a year Who before we pick it. Who put that in as the option? I think, wasn't it Joe? It might have been. Someone just suggested, like, night in the we woods. We have some good candidates, too, that I want. Like, the, the five people I put in that I want to see. Yeah. Oh, to who? Yeah. See, uh, yeah. see it's going to be a really good vlog either way. It's going to yeah, be like exactly. Bear Grylls esque. Yeah, it's like Survivor Man, just like night cam and yeah, everything. But really like, dumb. All I did was go out for a pee, and not very far from my hut was a jaguar. I watched him for a while. He watched me. For me, if I lose, like yeah, I'll do. It. I have no problem doing it. I just don't think it would be good content. Oh, I'm sure I would make it good, but like. It's too easy for me, I think. You're going to be eating worms and shit. Yeah, like, I'll be fine. You I could, used to eat chicken in the woods yeah, by yourself. Yeah, exactly. Like, I used would to you, dig a hole and would you, in the woods and eat chicken. What would be your strategy going into it? Say it's like, okay, you got to get out there at, like, 8 p.m. You could leave at 8 a.m. Are you just going to be like, I'm not going to eat? Like, I can go 12 hours out eating? Oh, yeah. I'm not going to eat. Am I going to kill a squirrel? I'm fucking... Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, I think I would try just so for the I content. Make I would a trap, make, yeah. I, I'm, I, I would make a spear. See, like, see, that's why you wouldn't survive. You're not going to spear a squirrel. You know what you do is you take a Have stick. Have you seen my arm? First of all, you take a stick and you take a really, really big rock and you put the rock on top of that stick. And then you put some type of food that you think the squirrel would eat on that stick. So when he goes to it, hits the stick, stick falls. The rock you think that it. rock is going to fall fast enough to get it? It's a big rock. How are you you're gonna have a rock? <laughs> you're so stupid. It's not gonna stay up on. You know, the, you know what's a great part though, because we we <laughs> probably agreed that uh, behind George's house where we're gonna go, so the yeah. rest of the rest of the league can party in there, and you have to sit in in the woods Just, like, and survive. Yeah, <laughs> that's wow. Should have thought that one. That's torture. There's like foxes and bears back there. By the golf is there, course. first of all, oh, foxes yeah. are not a threat. Bear, yeah. But coyotes back there. All by, right by the golf course. It's going to be so funny, like, six hours into the night, like, you finally see the fire spark up a little bit. <laughs> 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 like, they've been trying it for so long. I can't wait for this. I it's really want Larry be back fantastic. Larry or George, yeah. that's who I want back. Larry, so, want, honestly, most of the punishments were, like, funny as shit. I was like, I kind of wanted to do what half was that? Well, I'm a little upset because I looked at the votes and so I can figure out, like, who voted yeah. for, not who voted for what, but there was only three Three total votes for waterboarding. There Not was, they only got five points, and three of them came from you. Them, my number one was waterboarding. No yeah. one wants to do the waterboarding, which is yet. like blowing my mind. Why does that blow your mind? It's like it's not like a hard punishment. Why does just that blow? Take your okay. fucking waterboarding and be on with it. I don't know if it's something that people want to do though. Do you want to spend a night in the woods? Do you want frosted yeah, tips? Actually, I'd That's rather awesome. spend a night in the woods. Yeah, it's hilarious. Fucking fools. All right. There was I also never, another one that I that hasn't gotten a vote in like five years <laughs> that one of our crazy league mate brought up. Like six, seven <laughs> years ago, that just refuses to get any votes. It's gonna stay on the ballot next year for sure, and I think next year's. What the are you year. referring to? Ah, uh, they saw it. It's calling it a bee threat. A what? A bee threat. I don't know, a bee, like the animal, a sting. Yeah. Like a bee threat. Bee as, bee as in bitch. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I don't want to say it. 
I'm not saying it. You guys are pussies. It wasn't any of us. It rhymes so. with lip balm. <laughs> <laughs> You're so stupid. You're the worst <laughs> under pressure I've ever seen. No wonder you don't want to go on dates. I understand that. That was that. terrible. I'm surprised you can get your dick hard when you're about <laughs> to fuck. <laughs> Kenny? Animal's like, I can't. Okay, so our punishment is survive a night in the woods. We still have to figure out stipulations for it in terms of like time Yo, limit. I ripped what? the paper out. Doesn't that look like Louisiana? Yeah, it kind of does. Whatever, who cares? It really does. That looks just like Louisiana. I'm scared. You should bring that into the woods when you get last place. I ain't getting last. Okay. All right, so that basically sums up the league meeting. Productive. Anything you guys... Changes. Oh, actually, one last thing. We need to come up with our draft order. Oh, so yeah, please, please help us out. Please put some suggestions in the comments. Like, uh, you know, anything... Like, last year we did um, a golf tournament where everyone picked a golfer. But, like, we want to do something a little more exciting, a little more maybe involved. We can't all get together, though. So just keep that it in has, mind. It has to be it's something... It's got to be something that, like, we can just, like, virtually do and then, like, watch or whatever. Give us your best draft yeah. order pick yes. tip whatever the fuck you guys do for your leagues we want to know because we got to figure it out within the next couple weeks and yeah we can't physically get together for it so don't drop suggestions like punt fucking pass kick shit all right that's for the combine yes two yes, <laughs> yes. animal you are are two. you high turn your brain on today are yeah. you fucking high no i'm not so as most of you may know or may not know hard knocks starts on tuesday which is actually kind of a surprise to me because it doesn't even feel like I haven't training seen a single fucking going thing on, on like, Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Is been, training, I, can, I feel like training camp didn't start. It's just all these secret meetings still, like Brady's meeting yeah. with his receivers. Yeah. Like, is he allowed to do uh, that? No, it's like drones it's, over. It's, it's yeah. super weird. Field. There's really been like no advertisement for it. At least I haven't really seen anything like pumping it up at all because I don't even know if they really believe like they're going to be able to finish it. But August 11th on Tuesday, keep your eye out for hard Charger, Chargers. Chargers be and Rams. Yeah, any um. Any predictions on, like, players who are going to be, like, annoying or funny? Or? I wish they would stop doing the fucking rant. I don't know why they thought this was a good year to do m multiple teams. Well, yeah, we discussed that's just yeah, this bonkers. Most annoying, I think, I already think he's annoying, but he's probably going to piss me off even more, is Jalen Ramsey on a rant. Okay. He seems like just such a little cunt. He's a hothead. He's a hothead, so yeah. I get that. All you right. can't handle Tom Coughlin's pressure? You're a pussy. I mean, get out. I'm trying to think. I feel like... Uh, I feel like the quarterback situation for LA is going to be an that interesting be a good one spot. to watch. Yep. Mm -hmm. I feel like people are going to come away from it liking Justin Herbert a lot as like a I feel person. Like he's going to come off as like a cool dude, like a Josh Allen type. Yeah. Where you like watch him, you want him to succeed, but then he's going to fucking stick. Yeah, he's going to come and just like throw an accurate. I passes. also am excited to see Tyrod Taylor. I, you see him walking in with a new uni. Yeah. Got fucking drip. I, see I'm, his hair. Swaggy as fuck. I'm not really excited about him for hard knocks. But I mean, Keenan Allen, I'm excited. Keenan Allen, I think he's going to be. He's funny. got a loud mouth. He's got a chip like on he, his shoulder. Yeah, especially after he said the whole thing about him being the best. Receiver in the AFC. And I like Austin Eckler, out. too. I've seen some good content. Who's that? Eckler. Eckler. Some good content on yeah, Twitter. I, maybe maybe this will be the reason why I start personally liking Eckler. I'm, I'm kind of excited to see, like, McVay in, like, the war rooms. Yeah. Uh, war rooms. But, you know what I mean? Well, like, yeah, behind the, the scenes, they were on, adapting, on, on, seeing if he ever, if he brings up, like, what they did over the second half of last year. Yeah, I just want to see, like, some behind-the-scenes strategy stuff that with McVay. he wasn't on it, right? a great football mind. I don't last think he time was. No, it was Jeff Fisher, right? Yeah, the Rams have been on, like, Hard Knocks twice and All or Nothing, so, like, it's annoying that it's them again, but at least we have the Chargers. I think it's going to be very interesting just based on everything going on with COVID, so we'll see how they handle that along with... It might be good, though, because rather than just taking the best parts of one team, you know, you get the best parts of two teams, which oh, means a lot content-wise, they space. just doubled everything. Yeah. So, yeah, I think they realized, too, after last year with the Raiders, it was kind of a, a snooze fest. Yeah. So yeah, they're trying to spice saw. it up a little bit. So I think it should be good. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it just because I feel it's going to bring a little bit of normalcy back towards the season just to see like well, guys people are going to be going nuts. in pads and we stuff. have no reports coming out no preseason people are going to be going nuts over anything they can oh, get their, twitter their hands is going to be a with fucking, fucking i can't believe it starts next week i literally yeah, I went, said the same thing on the way in i was like wait what tell us that i wouldn't know yeah exactly that's why see that's what we do we bring you all the big news uh, great shit news. job marketing for them advertising yeah. for them Oh, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's, it hasn't been covered enough. Yeah. So I haven't, no, even, HBO. I haven't even seen like anything on Twitter. Shoot nothing. man, yeah. pay us. HBO We're fucking advertising Tuesday for you. night. Make sure you are watching Hard Knocks. Let's move on to some fancy football talk. But Skirt. before we do, guys, make sure you please just go and follow the Fade the Public channel. I got the pee bunk so bed bad. breakdown channel. Nice, go pee, buddy. You can go pee. It's all right. We'll, you can go we'll, pee. We'll carry the you go podcast pee. like usual. That's not true. Please subscribe. To the Bunk Bread Breakdown channel, the Fade the Public channel, the, the podcast. We're doing everything. We're making new content. Animal's House is coming to you soon. Waiting for the audio interface to come in. We'll have the a new show. The setup is unbelievable. 
throw yeah, the setup up there, Scott. I have a picture Scott. of the setup here for you. It's um, it's gonna be mainly lifestyle, sports, just random stuff. It's gonna be a good time. Dating advice. I hope you. Yeah, a lot of dating advice. <laughs> Can't wait. Intimacy. Just pound her out. Pounding them out. So hopefully, looking uh, forward to my invite onto the show. You guys subscribe and give us a follow there and uh, enjoy that content. All right. Oh, and also, I know you mentioned already, but while Snacks is peeing, just go buy the draft guide. Yeah, you cunts. Go buy the draft guide. We work very hard on it. It's literally the only thing you need to prep for your 2020 fantasy football drafts. It's got our rankings, all of our sleepers, undervalued busts, the all-fade list, the must-draft players. All the good shit is in there. Go to monkeyknifefight.com. Deposit 10 bucks on there with the promo code BDGE. That'll get you 15 bucks to play with on there, plus free access to all the guides once you play a game. I love you. Animal, I love you even more. Keep going. All right, boys. Let's get into the fantasy portion of the show. We're going to do a... It's, I don't want to say lightning round because we're going to stop in between each one, but the whole point is I want a quick reaction. I'm going to say two names. You pick one. You pick that player, and I want one reason why. You can save the reason. You don't have to write it down. You can save the reason for when you hold it up and why you went with that player. But I want to know what caused that, that split-second reaction to say, like, oh, it's got to be him. All okay. right? Great. All right, and you guys play along at home, too. First one. Don't tell him what to do. First one, Joe Mixon, Josh Jacobs. And for the record, this is a redraft, by the way, just yes. so we so we all understand. Redraft, half PPR, because that's our standard. All right, flip them. What we got? What we got? We got Jacobs. What we got? I can't see. We got Jacob. Jacobs. All right, why? It's more so an indictment on Mixon. I just I don't think they're ever going to give him the three-down roll. As long as Gio is there, he's not catching more than 40 passes. And on the flip side... I am getting much, much higher on the idea that Jacobs is going to catch 50-plus balls. Yeah. All the reports we're hearing are just that they want that to get more balls. That offense is running through Bra- uh, Brandon Jacobs. Wow. Uh, Josh, get your mind, out of, get your mind out of Giants, daughter. <laughs> Stop talking about the Giants. For it the wasn't, that wasn't even my fault. I just right. said who's, a name. Who's, it wasn't my fault. It's the most fucking Josh Jacobs, that offense yeah. runs through it. Derek Carr, Marks Mariota, Abysmal. He's going to get 300 carries again. Good offensive Josh line, Jacobs. too. Yes, very, All right, really very good All right, next one. Keenan Allen, Mike Evans. Keenan Allen, Mike Evans. All right, interesting. Why'd you go with Keenan? Because there's a lot of mouths to feed in Tampa Bay. Um, I like Godwin 20 times better. Keenan Allen is the best receiver in the AFC West, according to him. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just, I have fallen, uh, I've fallen much lower on Evans than I normally am. So Allen's going to catch his 100 balls and do his thing, and I'll go with him. Fair. While I'm much lower on Evans than most people are, I'm even lower on Allen. I just think. Whoever's a quarterback for LA is going to throw for 3,500 passing yards. Yeah, and even if Keenan Allen, even if Keenan Allen gets like 30 percent of the receiving yards, which is a huge percentage, I think his ceiling is a thousand yards, a thousand fifty yards, just because that passing offense won't allow anything more than that. And yep. I think Herbert gets eight games starting this year, and that is not going to be good for Keenan Allen. Yep. So Evans, I think Brady probably throws for 30, 32 passing touchdowns, and Evans will account that's, for eight of them. That's eight. I just did a best ball draft the other day. I took uh, Godwin and Evans back to back. Really? I like it. See, those two are so far apart from me. I'm like so far ahead like with Godwin oh, than yeah, I am with Evans. I just did it, for, it was a three-man uh, yeah. best ball league. So any, anyway, that's an, inter- that's an interesting question because Evans is actually going way higher than Allen is in ADP. But uh-huh. when, you, when you actually think about it, it's closer. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. should be closer. A lot of these guys are very close in ADP. Some may be a little further, but they're all very close. Okay. All right, next one. Kittle, Kelsey. George Kittle, Travis Kelsey. Kelsey, Kittle, love it. Wow. Kelsey, why? Four straight years as the tight end one. I don't know what else to say. George Kittle, under underknown fact that I think you guys need to actually tell me. pay attention to. I don't know to. any facts, so tell me. There's uh, the, the doctor I sent you the tweet from today. He put out a, you know, uh, what's it, whatever the fuck his name is, Scott, you'll the put it Fancy up. Points Doctor? Fancy Points Doctor. He put up a really interesting tweet about George Kittle. George Kittle tore his labrum and dislocated his shoulder. When you don't have surgery, you have a 45 to 55% chance to re-dislocate the shoulder within the next year. I have two torn labrums. And this is what Anthony Miller's been dealing with. This is why he keeps separating his shoulder, because he doesn't get it. He got it repaired, still had a lower chance to get it, and keeps dealing with it. So Kittle, who's coming off this, the, the non-surgical season is at a very high rate to re-injure it, and, uh, and that makes me very, very nervous. He's a little too risky for me in those early rounds. Again, Travis Kelsey. It's good to know. Tight end you one can't change it. It's too late. No, listen, he's a good analyst. He's got to change I want to know why you pick Kittle at first, though. I think it's time for a new number one tight end. I wouldn't, and, wouldn't and, be surprised. And Jimmy Kittle. G's number one target by far. So yeah. I, just, I, I have a really good feeling about him this year. But that, that scared me off. I got to read more into that. So I, I didn't... I'm going to send you guys the tweet in, Please, in yeah. the chat. Um, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be surprised if Kittle blew the field away. If he stays healthy, it's 50% mm-hmm. chance. So there's yeah. 50% chance yeah. he does. Debo might start on the pup. 
Well, Kittle, I think he's definitely Kittle could paste. Yeah, he's Kittle, on the pup. Kittle could paste the tight end target lead by a massive amount through October. And that's so pretty I mean, much where I'm huge. going with as the number one guy in, in San Fran. So. Yeah, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. All right. Very cool. All right. We got a little running back action here coming up. Ezekiel Elliott or Alvin Kamara? <laughs> Alvin Kamara. <laughs> I'm not mad at that. Oh. Who we got? Kamara for snacks and a Kamara for Nick. Yeah. All right. So we both have Kamara. Yeah, here. last year's not last year is not happening. He um, Kamara's much better. Latavius Murray is, is nothing behind him, so he's gonna catch hundred balls, two thousand yards. He's gonna have a monster year. Yeah, I think Kamara's set up for a monster, monster year. I don't, year. I don't disagree. He's healthy. He's ready to roar. I think Zeke's involvement in the passing game is gonna take a huge hit this year. Uh, adding C D Lamb, bringing in Mike McCarthy, who does not really throw to his running backs often. And Kamara, yeah, I mean, uh, Kamara was the single most elusive running back in fantasy last year per PFF prior to the high ankle sprain. Dipped down, saw at the end of the season he scored, I think, five rushing touchdowns in the final three games. So yeah. it's like Kamara, one, once he's back to himself, the which end, he will the be The end of last year, year was what we, we know yeah. Kamara's capable 81 of. 81 catches in three straight fucking years. Yeah. He only played 14 games last year, so on a per-game basis it was even, yeah, fucking Kamara. In standard, I will I will probably go with Zeke, though. You yeah. get no points per reception. Oh, for sure. If it was standard, we're going yeah, Zeke. but we're yeah. going to have PPR here, so all mm-hmm. right. Got some quarterbacks here, guys. Cam Newton and Drew Locke. What the fuck, animal? That's a tough one. <laughs> for for in what fucking world? Who'd you go with? Cam. Cam. This is not close at all. Really? You're out of your fucking I mind. Like I, so here, going into this, I thought just because of like the mystery around Cam and it's not really sure. I feel like they're both kind of question marks. Uh, so, I, I mean, I can understand the point. We saw a little bit from Locke last year, but. Cam's talent exponentially more than Drew Locke. Oh, yeah, their their ADP even, won't be close by the time drafts come That's around. not even, you know. Of course not. Of course not. It's arguable. But for me, I, you know. It's more about the hype I, I and like the, Locke, the, the fear. So, like, do they even each other out? I think I like Locke to run an offense. But for fantasy and Cam's rushing ability, I'm taking that upside over Locke's. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to let the YouTube comments uh, fiddle this one out. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> we'll see. I, I would take Cam. I'm just was curious. Screenshot. Cam Akers or J.K. Dobbins? Mm. Cam Akers or J.K. Dobbins? Snacks went with Akers. Nick went with Dobbins. Mm. Love it. Let's, Let's go. Dobbins. All right, why Dobbins? I'm going to choose Dobbins because I think I think all these rookies have a tough time getting on the field on paper. We're not going to be able to tell who's going to get on the field. We're not, we're not going to be able to know which one is the guy, right? I'm going to roll the dice on the guy whose upside I think is way higher, given mm-hmm. the context of the team he's on. I think there's a much higher chance that J.K. Dobbins outplays and takes a starting role from like Mark Ingram than Cam Akers is going to be able to be efficient this year, even if he does get the job, because that offensive line is going to be terrible. And Sean McVay won't shut the fuck up about a four-man running back by committee. I know. Yeah. Akers is definitely the most talented there. I just think even if he does... He could be the guy getting the most carries, but is it enough carries? It's just going to be ugly. But see, that's my thing, because I trust him to have a better chance at being the number one guy in his backfield as opposed to Dobbins. But I guess you could say like a forward-thinking Baltimore Ravens team when they see that Dobbins is probably at this stage a better... Better yeah, player, you know what? Like options. straight I think he's up, eventually take over the role. Yeah, but I think season. Acres has the more clear path to start right away. Yeah, for sure. Straight up, I'd probably take Acres, but I'm thinking. I guess like my my mind went to like where you actually have to take them. I think yeah. Acres is like fifth, sixth, and Dobbins is almost like eighth, later ninth on. right now. Yeah, so I go Dobbins value wise, but I guess straight up Acres because his his path to touches is clear and he's talented. Yeah, I would even like a go with Dobbins just talent everything wise, just because I think that offense is so much better. The Rams are like fucking. The They're Rams an offense that could go downhill mark. really yeah. quickly. Like, as soon as they start struggling, the whole team could just collapse. Yeah. Whereas the Ravens, I don't see that happening with them. They're too solid of a team, too many solid pieces. And I think, like, last year you were very low on Mark Ingram. And I think you were a year early. That's all. Yeah, I think, probably. Like, this is going to be the year you're going to see Mark Ingram take that you know, less workload, less touchdowns. Like, would you say, like, five touchdowns last year is what he probably would have had? Six and a half, I think. Yeah, like, I think you'll see that Everything this else, year. I, yeah, what it was, it was that, that was it. Like, I said he was going to have 14 touches a game, average mm-hmm. 5.5 yards a carry. He just and had way more touchdowns. It, yeah, it's exactly what he did. Yeah. He just had five receiving touchdowns. Yeah. Like, that's ridiculous. I think ridiculous. you'll see they'll get J.K. involved in some of that and stuff. So, that's should yeah. be Yeah, the five receiving touchdowns not going to happen again. So. All right. Tight end time. Skirt. Joe New Smith, Tyler Higby. Joe New Smith. Tyler Higby. Oh, That's really tough. Yeah. Higby, Hig bust. Which one is it? You don't even feel good about ah. it. No, I don't. I'm, I'm very torn. You don't even I feel, feel I don't good feel good about, about this either. I'm actually, I, I changed my opinion last second. Smith and Smith. All right, so we got double Joe news. Yeah. 
Uh, I like it. You changed it, though. All right, so I, why? I, I think he has a very clear path to just being the only second target in this offense. Correct. That's, they that's don't have a running fault. back. That's, that's my I love. I do love Higby, but that's not. I, I think can't buy maybe, maybe not love Higby. I can't buy into a, a five-week sample size yeah. of Higby after he's been in, yeah. the, year, in the league for four or five years. Mm-hmm. Those games came while Jared Everett was mainly hurt, and too. He's coming and Jared Everett's back. Yeah, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm out on, on the Higby train if you have to draft him at, like, tight end seven or eight where he's going. And Jonu Smith, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he disappoints also, but, like, but you're buying on There's like no the, one else catching the youth there. and the opportunity versus like you're buying on Higby's five good games against the Cardinals twice. Like yeah, like Corey Davis has had four fucking years. The Cardinals years. and the Giants, the three worst teams against the tight end last year. Oh, the Giants definitely won. But that's what I'm yeah. saying. And the, the Higby played oh, yeah, those yeah, five yeah. games. Yeah. Like, yeah. So like, yeah. not buying that. Great picks by. Oh, snacks. Sure Jonu, why? Same thing. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, he's the clear number two guy there. And Higby Everett's back. They still have Woods and and Cup. All right, we got three left. I'm going to take a better efficient offense as opposed to. We got three left. We got Deontay Johnson and Darius Slayton. Two young up and coming wide receivers. Who are you going with? I think I know Snacks is taking Darius Slayton. Yes, I am going to take Darius Slayton. And All right. That's okay. And Nick went with Deontay Johnson. It's okay. I just think Slayton has a much more clear path to being the number one receiver on his team. Um, and Deontay's others, and they're going, what, same round, ninth, tenth round? Yeah, they're right around the same. So if I'm taking that, I'm going to take the upside for a guy that has a chance to be the number one in his offense um, with the best quarterback in football. So Darius Slayton. Yeah. Yeah, like it makes that. sense. I mean, Deontay, for the most part, doesn't really have a path to be the number one with Juju there in the slot, but he could be the number one on the outside. And yeah. last time Big Ben was on the field, they threw the ball like 6,000 times. Yeah. And I think Deontay Johnson is – if I'm going talent-wise, I think Deontay Johnson is more talented. For than sure. And I would, I would agree with that. Yeah, and everything from the numbers last year in terms of, like, target separation, in terms of success versus man coverage, press coverage, he had some Antonio Brown light to him. They drafted him, I think, to fit that style, that mold. But there are a lot of receivers who James Washington might have his games. Juju's mm-hmm. obviously going to have his games. For me, it comes down to, like, Darius Slayton's competing with Golden Tate and Sterling Shepard for targets, and then Deontay Johnson's competing with Juju Smith-Schuster and... There's really no one else, but Juju's like better than both those guys in his name. So yeah, like, out of that group, he's the best. James Washington, I mean, wasn't he could great play. last year. He just year. went on the COVID list, though. He could play. Wow. Yeah, but like everyone come, goes on I just, and you know, off the COVID list. I just don't know list. if he's gonna come back or not. I just one of those things. But yeah, so I um I would I would probably lean Darius Slayton for that. All right, two more, two more. Adam Thielen or Odell Beckham Jr. Thielen. Yeah, I, I kind of thought that. We're both going to agree on that one. Yeah, I kind of thought that. I mean, dude, Stefan Diggs out of there. At the, the, he's, he's, he he's might see get 200 a, targets. He's going to get a 35% <laughs> target share. Even yeah. if the Vikings are not pass heavy like they weren't last year, there's just no – like, in what situation does he not walk away from the field with 140 targets It would, be, it would take a year? catastrophe, a pandemic for him not to, to a clip. Yeah, I'm more worried about OBJ's just, like, whole mentality as a whole. Like He sucks. I just don't think he even likes football anymore. Like, it just seems like he like just, he's like I'm just like a famous celebrity. Now. I'm not even a football yeah, player. So yeah. like, I agree. The Giants right. ruined him. Last Lo- one. Last one. We're gonna end with some quarterbacks here. Carson Wentz or Matthew Stafford. Carson Wentz or Matthew Stafford. Who we got? Snacks went with Stafford, and Nick went with Wentz. I love it. You're really gonna draft Stafford straight up over Wentz? Probably not. But I don't think the reasoning is awful. I think the Detroit Lions defense is going to be terrible. I think they throw the ball all game. Stafford was on pace to be a top five quarterback last year before he got hurt. They both have their injury concerns, and I'm just going to trust Stafford to continue on his first five games. Listen, I get the whole Wentz. I get it. Nope. Yeah, I took, I, took staff. I, I think they're very, both very close. So. Yeah, to me, it's like a coin flip on who stays healthy. I do think Wentz probably has more upside than Stafford does if both can play their 16 games. I mean, we look back at, I think it was two years ago when Wentz was the number three quarterback in fantasy. Um, and that was the upside that I think we can get from Wentz if he does fucking stay on the field. He's got a good O line, finally got some weapons to work yeah. with. Jalen Rager, if Deshaun Rager's Jackson can stay him. on the field. Like, That's my only concern here is that I think, like, Stafford, while having the worst or, or like, team all around him, has the better weapons, clearly, whereas Carson Wentz has the better team all around. But we don't really know about his weapons yet. Like, yeah. Is Greg Ward going to be his fucking slot receiver? You know, it was a crazy, a crazy stat someone brought up that Wentz was the first quarterback in history to throw so, for 4,000 yards and no without a wide it, yeah. receiver going over 500 receiving yeah. yards. Yeah, that's an insane. That's, like, that's pretty insane. fucking impressive. Imagine yeah. he's got a, you know, what, well, it, Rager and Deshaun Jackson both go for like 800 or something. Like That's a mix of people Goddard, getting hurt. Goddard, and, Goddard and, Ertz you know, still there. Yeah. But yeah, agreed. It's uh, definitely interesting. So yeah. All right. So that was good. Good stuff, Animal. Hopefully you guys uh, got a little more clarity on some guys that you maybe uh, weren't sure who you would take or not. Skirt. Let's move on to the social portion. Then this fucking episode here. Skirt. 
Yeah. We uh we saw three. this this post on Barstool. We oh, do this, oh, this I want to do this yeah, real okay, quick, yeah, real yeah, quick, because yeah, yeah, yeah. um, yep. run out of time here. So it was a post. It was uh, what group it's of not fictional? Running out of time. We make the time. That's true. What group of fictional TV characters would you most want to drink with? And the options were Scott will have the picture here, but you got Friends, Entourage, The Office, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Parks and Recreation, Friday Night Lights, Blue Mountain State, Trailer Park Boys. And the last four, you got Sons of Anarchy, Workaholics, Sopranos, and Peaky Blinders. Okay, so let's go with, I think, off the rip. We have to establish that you're drinking in the show setting, right? Like, is that what it is? Yeah, I, I feel okay. like it has to be. Yeah, like, you're yeah, not yeah. just drinking with these people. You're drinking like, say, you're, it's always sunny. You're drinking with them at Patty's Pub. Okay, so in I think, Philly, so I'm out. Yeah. I, think mo- <laughs> I think most people... <laughs> Uh, or at least we can agree who our top ones are. Yeah. Like I'm gonna throw Entourage in. Entourage as, as my has number to be one. there because we're in L- we're in LA. There's yeah. nothing I would rather do exactly. more than go to a casino with Ari Gold. Yeah. But there's nothing I would rather see yeah. him do more than panic at the roulette table. He's splitting kings. The blackjack <laughs> table. Yeah, that would. I mean, and also if you're in the setting, you're probably at like some fucking bumping house party at some yeah. model. Yeah, house. you're in LA with a movie star, so like. That's yeah. awesome. Just, and Johnny it's, Drama. It's so, really TV almost star. the too obvious of the answer, but for the sake of conversation. Who I want to bring up? Who are your underrated, or who would you challenge on? I think with? Sons of Anarchy is underrated. No. I I'm sorry. I, maybe I, maybe I just love this show. So you're gonna go with there's the some crime. brash aggressiveness. Going with the crime genre, you gotta go Sopranos. Oh well, no no no! But that was that's a given. Yeah. So, so my problem with Drinking those wine ones, at the Bing. I, yeah, I figured you would go with the Sopranos. My problem with those is like, those are gonna turn into. Like getting drunk with those guys, you're gonna end up like killing someone. Yes, it's, so it's almost like being being at like exactly. a high school party. Like you're the guy who punches the hole through the wall. Like that's what drinking. No, with no. Those so guys here's what I'm thinking like, with the Sopranos is like I'm getting drunk at the Bing. I'm getting dances. I'm smoking stogies great with Tony. Food, We're great eating food. fucking food in the back. We're playing cards. You know, getting BJ's and then. Like maybe two a.m. Someone owes Tony money. I go kick someone's ass. I go beat some guy. It's kind up. of it's kind of adventurous Dude, and part of the lifestyle yeah. me and Max night. have always wanted. Like that wanted. shit. Like I could always go to L.A. and party. No, you like, can't. Yeah, you can. Can't. <laughs> <laughs> not like that. Not like not yeah, you can. Not on that level, but like. And I was struggling between like Blue Mountain. You could State literally oh, not, you see, could, yeah, Blue Mountain State but would be. You huge, could yeah. physically always go to the Bada Bing and do exactly what you just no, said. No, it's too. not the same. Not with Tony smoking oh, stogies and everything, beating up guys owe money. Rest in peace, Tony. The thing with Blue Mountain State is it's literally just a D1 college party. Like you go, like obviously. Have it's, you it's, seen their their party? It's exaggerated for TV, of course, but like if you go to like yeah, those Alabama like frat house, like after they win a game, I guarantee it's very similar. Like yeah. you could have just as equally of a fun experience. As you would with the Blue Mountain State, other than like I, you don't have Thad and the characters there. I can understand what you're it's saying. There. I can tell you who I party. wouldn't pick. I wouldn't pick Friends. That shouldn't no, be. On, that shouldn't be on, on the, the list. list. Like I don't even know what they were thinking. Like you're not drinking with Friends. You're not drinking with Parks and Rec unless like. Even I, then, I no. think low key Peaky Blinders would be a fun one too. Because I, of the time period. Yes, the time period, Agreed. like the way you get to dress. Yes. Like you're just sipping on fucking really good whiskey, you know, at the bar. I don't know how fun the actual experience would be, but like they're a good group of dudes to drink with, I feel yeah. like. I feel like that would be good. One. I, like there's literally only a top three here. It's like Entourage, Sopranos, Sopranos and then and, uh, I guess you can argue I would the do third Blue one. State yeah. Third. But yeah. like you're not drinking with Trailer Park Boys. Like, what, who the fuck? I don't want to drink with the office. The, you, would, you would laugh a lot, but I don't. The office doesn't really excite me. Always Sunny would actually be really funny. Disagree. It, Terrible. See, here's my thing. When I drink, I like to like try and like have sex to just pound her out pounding them out so like so, always sunny is literally just so a bunch you want to eat meat with tony soprano yeah and bang strippers yeah but like always sunny they're like hilarious and you would probably have actually a miserable time because they're always getting to ridiculous scenarios true. and you're just guaranteed to knock and laid. they're mostly they're miserable all the time. a bunch of losers who never get laid and it always goes wrong but that's why it's so funny but like it wouldn't be fun to be in Good point. Entourage takes the cake. Yeah, they entourage, take the entourage has Easiest to answer. It has to. Because you're with a superstar and you're in LA and that's it. You could do whatever you want. So, uh, comment below what you guys think. Friday night nights. If you drink with high schoolers, fuck come on. If you can make a case for any of these, then I'd love to hear it. But, I mean, Entourage and Sopranos are the only right answers. I'd have to agree. All right. You're up, big you man. Ready for round it's three? Snacks for Pantry. Snacks Pantry. Snacks Pantry. All right, all right, all right. Assume Last. the position. Round two, we had uh, we had best fictional quarterbacks. Today, I don't know how this is probably easy. Probably get a few off the I'm gonna, rip. I'm gonna hate this. Um, it's not no, it's not bad. So it's best sports days of the year, like that one day. So like it's not on the list, but like the Kentucky Derby. That's today. 
So the best sports oh, okay. day of the year. Um, can I start? Super Bowl Sunday. That was the obvious answer. It has and to be number one. No. If it's number not one. number one, Super I Bowl leave. Sunday is number one, especially when you win two titles in eight years. But uh, Super, so- Super Bowl Sunday food, a lot of booze, usually the two best teams in football, playing a big football game, ending the year. Uh, can't beat it. It's, it's the juggernaut. Thank you for explaining the Super Bowl. So, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. So there's two I want to go with here. I don't know. I want to say fantasy football draft night, but that might be too subjective to us. So I'm it not. Is, yeah. Okay. So I'm so going to just say with opening opening kickoff for the NFL. Yes. Sunday oh. NFL kickoff. Love it. That Sunday. Not, yeah. the, not Thursday. Yeah, Sunday no, no. NFL Sunday, kickoff Sunday. week one um, comes in at number three. All right. Obvious reasons. It's the first day red zone goes on. You got, you got your wings, you got your, your, your pigs in a blanket, you're excited, you set your fantasy lineups for the first, well, I guess you do it before Thursday, but you know what I'm saying. Question. So, NFL. What was, this was of the year, right? Yeah, of the year. So, so like, but like, what about like, so I'm going to say this out, like, what about the World Cup? No. Because that's not every year. No. Like, the Olympics? No. All right. I feel like Didn't even you, think about them. Oh, Sorry. Some American I, you are. But that, that um, what? All right, so what do I work for the United Nations? No, I, yeah, no. Are these all going to be like opening days, like baseball opening day? Uh, well, thought about opening day for MLB, but I'm so subjective to the Yankees, and I only watch the Yankees on opening day, so I took it off the list. It was an honorable mention, not on the list. There's one you guys are definitely not going to think of because it's. Think about who you're talking about. Nathan's think, hot dog eating contest. No. Why are you July 4th? a fucking? That's not. Wait, yes, it's. That's yeah, a, it's a sport. Well, okay. It, it, oh, it, it, uh, it Thanksgiving. Si- Thanksgiving Day football. Ooh, that's a really good one. Maybe probably should have been on the list, but that's not it. I had the two football ones. I did not want to add a third. So I'll give you right now. I'll give you right now. How you is have, Thanksgiving Day? You have oh, Super Bowl Sunday. You have Super Bowl Sunday number one. <laughs> NFL Sunday week one number three. Then you have Christmas Day NBA games. No, I'm not. It's like, I like. I don't it. like it either. I like but it, like, but I, it's I, not. I like there is it. no it's, NBA. It's fine. There is no NBA. There's no NBA. There's no NBA, but there could be another. There's kind no of, Kentucky Derby. There could be another kind of hoop. Oh, boys, gentlemen, gentlemen, we come on. Kind of hoop, hoops. W, hoops. WNBA oh. kickoff. Boom. Opening day. Huge. <laughs> no, come on, come on. Oh, March what? Madness yes. opening day. Yes, uh, the opening day of March Madness. You know what? It's like wasn't even in my head because no, it didn't happen a, this that's year. That's a great day. Yeah. It's yeah. a phenomenal day from 12 oh, yeah. from 12 p.m. to 12 no, midnight. You're right. you're so right. March Madness opening day comes in at number four. I'm going to say it, but I know it's not on there. The Indy 500. Any guesses? <laughs> <laughs> so, are okay. you are you are you serious? I don't think you're going to get number two, but if you really think I want to say like person, Master Sunday. Fucking genius. Master Sunday comes in at number five. So wow. there is nothing to me when Tiger's in it or not. I still I will get up and I will watch yeah. all Sunday long in the Masters because it's the most beautiful course. It's the, the highest stakes on the PGA Tour. For me, it's too easy, especially when Tiger wins last year like he did. Huh. I'm trying to think of like huh. when Twitter explodes when I don't typically care. And this, I just see like some, well, it, some ob- like that's how I got that one. Okay, I, like, I well, don't want that I, shit. I, you you see me tweet about about this type of event that happens once a year. WrestleMania number two, WrestleMania, wow. the King of Kings, the Granddaddy of them all. How many spots can you get The yeah, Rock versus good. Stone Cold in three separate ones? Undertaker, Triple H, and a Hell in a Cell, Shawn Michaels, special guest referee. I can't believe you, you don't put get that, that at number two. Number two. <laughs> I almost thought about putting it number one. I can't I believe really, Thanksgiving football I really, was not Well, I, want, I didn't want to put three football in there. I almost Should've. thought about WrestleMania at number one because I love that day so much. It's, it's the highlight of my year. It's when the big stars come out. Usually the glass shatters, and that makes me cry. And the Undertaker's entrance. It's the whole, the whole ordeal of WrestleMania. Number two. Super Bowl, WrestleMania, NFL, Sunday, week one. March Madness, Master Sunday. Snacks Pantry, round three. Good Snacks Pantry. It's a good, it's a good I enjoyed list. that one. Yeah. Thank you, boys. I enjoyed it. I, I never probably would have gotten the WrestleMania. Yeah. I'm happy. Sporting event is probably As soon as he said, like, been. WrestleMania, all I thought of, oh, when he said, I tweet about yeah. this, all I thought of was, like, <laughs> WrestleMania, like, 72 exclamation points. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely my favorite day of the year, but... All right. What else we got on the the agenda? Is that it? That's it. That's everything we got for today. All right. That's the Fade the Public episode. Make sure you like and comment. and uh, Like and comment and just click every fucking link in the description. And the 
how to do the draft order. Just and check your emails because you. you got a newsletter coming to you every Monday morning, 11 a.m. Every Monday morning. We'll put the link to sign up for our newsletter every Monday morning to keep you on top of what's going on with the brand and whatnot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We love you. Peace Thank out, you. dogs. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.